did you pick this spot uh, in the first place? Was it the spot? Was it the neighborhood? Was it what was available? What, what, well, originally, what made... originally, I worked three years down on Holcomb and Cross at Webster's Barber Shop. Okay. And then after I built up a clientele, I moved to a nearby spot, and this was it. This was the one that was available at the time? This is the one, one I liked. Okay. It was more irrelevant, but this, this okay. is the one I liked. <laughs> What, if any, impact was the, I heard uh, Daniel talk about the riot, I always call it the rebellion, because, you know, right. we got mad for a reason, but I don't have to, you know, did, did that affect the early stages of your business at all? Well, it did, because uh, we, were, we were originally, we were blocked out, we couldn't, we couldn't open the business, we had to oh, okay. vacate the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, they, and the National Guard was rolling up and down the street to make sure people stayed off the streets. You know, and at that time we were living in the Brewster Projects. So, you know, my, my grandmother lived on, uh, on Atkinson on the west side, but we stayed at her house during, you know, the rebellion. And I remember seeing the tanks going up 14th yeah. Street, going up Claremont, because her house was only a block and a half from where the rebellion actually started uh, on 12th and Claremont, just about. So. Yeah, it was uh, it was a uh, it was a different time, and it was. Uh, I mean, I, I don't I don't know how you felt at the time, but I, I didn't have any guarantees that you know. In my mind, I was very comfortable about whether it was ever gonna go away. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, the rebellion went away. Unfortunately, the conditions that created the rebellion went away. Haven't gone away enough. Some of them have for sure. Um, and the other thing is how how did you uh, how did you wind up with eight children, five of whom have a license? Now, I know I asked you how you had eight children. I figured that out. <laughs> what I'm what I'm talking about is how did five of them get motivated to to at least be licensed to follow you in the in the business? Well, I used to leave my my uh, my uh, receipts from the days to take it on the counter so they could see it. Okay. They were saying that I was making a little bit of money, <laughs> and they wanted some money in their pockets too. Right. So they decided to go to barber school. I hear you. I hear you. So there's a lot to be said for uh, the kind of environment that a parent creates. Yes, sir. Right. I, I absolutely, absolutely believe that. In our community, if there were more small businesses that were supported, there'd be a whole different kind of idea. You know. In my mind, kids of color think about being a sports person or yes. being this and that and the other, something that they see on television. There's not that, or the opportunity to follow in the, the footsteps of what their parents did, but, you know, quite often, you know, what their parents were able to do is not something that they can control. That's true. You know, I mean, if you're working in an auto plant or something, there's got to be a job there for you to go, to be able to have your own um, environment. I mean, I, I came from a family. I, I, I didn't think about it when I was when I was a kid, but I had my father was a doctor, my mother was a school teacher, which didn't at, at that time I, I I didn't realize how lucky I was. I mean, we weren't loaded, you know. We lived on Pasadena, right between living. I mean, we were working people, but the idea as a kid that you know you could go to college and do this because you saw your dad do it or you could become a teacher because you saw your mother do it, truly, to me, was the motivation to go ahead and try to do it. You know, I mean, if, if, if there wasn't something there in front of me every day, the question is, what would I have been motivated to try to do? And I, I can't honestly say, you know, what that would have been. And so, you know, whether it's a profession or a business that's owned by somebody, the ability to use them as a mentor to make you confident that you can do something just makes a lot of sense to me. You know, kids of color can do anything, but they don't believe it unless they see somebody that looks like them that has done it. And that's like the link between it. People can tell you stuff all the time, but we've been disappointed enough times in life. Everybody has, but you sit there and see an opportunity where, okay, somebody looks like me did it, and I'm all in. Now I feel like I can do it. So people who have led the way like you have, you know, you can't say enough about how that's helped to move a community forward. So, 
I just want to thank you from Wayne County. We brought you a proclamation, and I ain't going to sit there and read the proclamation because this page is boring, but you know what it says. Yes, sir. You know, it says that you've been a solid part of the community for an awful long time, a stable business that's been here. You've raised your family. You've supported a neighborhood. I'm sure you cut hair when people didn't have the money to get the hair cut, you know, uh, going for a job interview, what, whatever it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of a community, and so uh, I think you richly rewarded uh, the community with the stuff you've done, and uh, at least I want to say as a representative of 1.8 million people, we thank you. Thank you, too, sir. Thank you.